Well, first of all, let me say that I, I do think this is a critical topic, and it's a moment when uh, there are many reasons we should be turning to it. As, as you said, Senator Stabenow, this is the day that 50 years ago, President Kennedy signed the Community uh, Mental Health Act. Uh, he called it then a bold new approach. Uh, and frankly, while some things have happened in the 50 years since then and now, there haven't been many bold new approaches in that 50 years. This is a topic that for whatever reason, uh, our society hasn't dealt with uh, in ways that have been satisfactory in, in making great changes. In fact, some of the things we've done in other areas have really made it harder for communities and families to, uh, to work with people who have a behavioral challenge, to find out the information that that person doesn't want to share with them. All of us uh, can probably think of some family that this has happened to where you still have a, an ongoing commitment to that, uh, that adult son or daughter or mom or dad. You're part of what they're doing. You're paying some of the bills. You're doing whatever. Uh, but the information that you really would benefit from knowing about is just hard to get to. Uh, or the requirement that somebody follow up on a court-ordered procedure uh, is uh, difficult to enforce and make that happen. Uh, and I think this is one of the times when we really need to be thinking, what do we need to do uh, to make this challenge work better? First of all, it's, it's a widespread problem, but it's not a problem that's untreatable. Uh, I think there's, a, there's one statistic I've seen, in fact, it's the, the National Institute of Mental Health. One in four adults suffer from uh, a mental disorder that's diagnosable and in all case, in, in virtually every case, treatable, one in four. So this is not a stigma. This is not something that you're the only person this has ever happened to or that your, your, your loved one's the only person this has ever happened to. This is, this is something that, that many families understand. Um, many people have a challenge that never gets uh, diagnosed, frankly. Uh, and the creating a way for that to happen, where uh, we make it easier, we make it more comfortable, we make it affordable, whatever we're doing to allow uh, that, in almost every case, treatable problem to be diagnosed and treatable uh, is important. Uh, you know, one of the things that you and I started talking about, really at the, almost the very first of this year, we've been now talking about this for almost 10 months. And of course, it was after the tragedy at Newtown. Uh, and uh, the one thing we know for sure is that uh, somebody that has a, 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 a mental health problem is much more likely to be the victim of a crime than they are to be the perpetrator of a crime. But the other thing we know is that as we look at these tragedies we've seen happen in our country in the last few years, that the, the one common denominator, whether it was in Newtown or Aurora or, or Tucson or at the Navy Yard or Virginia Tech, whether it was at a supermarket or in a theater or on a college campus, the one thing that we saw that in every case was this was somebody that had a behavioral problem, a, a mental health problem that hadn't been dealt with in the right way. Uh, and that really in many ways has turned the attention of the country back to a problem that for whatever reason, we just as soon apparently not talk about. In fact, uh, when uh, um, the Senate committee that deals with mental health had a hearing in January of this year on mental health, uh, Madam President, it was the first time since 2007 that there had been a Senate hearing devoted to this topic, uh, a, a topic that, again, the National Institute of Health said one out of four adults is challenged by the Senate in six years hadn't talked about it in any kind of official, focused way. And so that's why, uh, Senator Stamino, you and I have been working to try to, frankly, take advantage of the moment. Uh, and I think in the, um, the, the principal piece of legislation we've been working on, the Excellence in Mental Health Act, we also have a model there that works. A couple of different things done, and one, of course, was to uh, expand the federally qualified health center concept to where if you wanted to add behavioral health, you could under the same rules and regulations. And frankly, you'd be walking in the same door that your neighbors were walking in. And we also created ways for 
uh, community health centers, the very health centers that President Kennedy's legislation that he signed created to, to, to add some of the advantages to being a federally qualified center uh, to being a, a, a community mental health center. Uh, and certainly your efforts in that, and, and I know we both have stories to tell, other things we're working on as well, uh, but you know, we've had great response from the, um, the community mental health centers, great response from veterans, and you might want to talk about that a little bit because I know you've particularly been engaged in a lot of these yes. discussions with veterans groups who say if, if, if our veterans just had a place to go that was well, that was close, right. Uh, where their neighbors were going, perhaps, for some other kind of behavioral help. And, and we've got a wide uh, base of support from our veterans groups as well as our health care groups on this. I'll just say, I think in both of our states, we've, we've seen our states lead in this. Missouri's clearly been a pioneer in mental health efforts. Our community health centers, many of them have added behavioral health in the last few years. There are other pieces of legislation out there that I think add to this mental health first aid where uh, people who, uh, particularly dealing with young people, can take a course and they don't become people who can deal with your problem, but they may help you recognize that you have a problem and somebody needs to deal with this. I just agree with Senator Stabenow. The time is now. Actually, we'd probably be on the time we should have done this, but we would be ill-advised to go further down this road without looking at this system, figuring out how we can improve it. And I think in the Senate, there are many bipartisan ideas uh, and, and I really believe that uh, the Excellence in Community Health Act is right at the top of that list. But we need to look at this and do it and do it now. And I look forward to seeing something happen on this, I hope, between now and the end of the year.